I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Well, welcome tonight to the Ex-Mormon Files. And before you change the channel, <laughs> uh, you're thinking Earl's going to be here. And, uh, and I'm sitting here instead. I'm Jim Catlin. I'm the pastor of Main Street Church in Brigham City. And Earl is here tonight. So Earl is our guest tonight. And uh, we're, we've Hi. decided to switch the tables, <laughs> and uh, and I'm going to interview you instead of you interviewing somebody else. I'm so, excited to share my story. So, so we get to find out about the deep, dark secrets, <laughs> but don't go too dark. Just deep <laughs> is all we need. But I, but a lot of people, uh, you know, they ask me since they know that that uh, that I know you ask me more questions about you personally. And, yeah. And I uh, said so we should just meet Earl sometime because he's yeah. a nice guy. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to find out about your background some and how you got to be what you're doing here and, yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So this this will be kind of fun. Yeah, I yeah. hope so. And <laughs> share some some things that maybe people don't know about me, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's start like the normal format you do. Let's go back and let's start talking about your life uh, in the church. Now, you were you were born in the church, in the covenant? Yeah, uh, not in the covenant. My, no. I was born in Gunnison, Utah, and, okay. and r was raised here in Salt Lake, went to South High and up to you. But my uh, mom and dad were, my, my dad was never more than a teacher. Oh, uh, I always okay. had that hope uh, before he passed away that he would become an elder and that the, my right. mom and dad could get married in the temple. And actually he died in April and by November my mom had uh, gone through the temple and had us sealed. So we all wow. went into the temple and, and were sealed. Wow. But just very active, normal life, baptized at eight and deacon at 12 and teacher at 14, teacher 14 and priest at 16 yeah, right, right. and was the president of those and the first assistant in the priest quorum and so very active i was a scout and went on all the activities and, and you enjoyed it i mean you weren't coerced i mean it was a no no I, part of life yeah and, mom was very active and uh, uh, so it was just part of my life yeah yeah i just knew the church was true it was always true <laughs> And I had a, a wonderful experience early on about Joseph Smith and his uh, when I was about 16 and knew just you yeah, were, just a, had a so burning had a, in the bosom. So you had a pretty solid testimony then. Yeah, it was. I mean, I don't want to be too proud about it now, well, yeah, but yeah. but I want the people out in the audience to understand that there was no question in my mind at all that the right. church was true. That Joseph was a prophet of right. the Restoration and. Yeah, no question. So you weren't you weren't one of these, uh, you know, eternally rebellious children that held secret no. desires to leave and hated no. your your you know. Never no. smoked, never drank, still haven't. Uh, yeah. No coffee, no tea. No, oh, great. No great. No big sins, as no big Mormons sin. call them. <laughs> no big sins. You know, I was a scout too. Were you? I just made it this far from Eagle Scout. I was kind of miffed you? about that. Moved out of the country, and that was into that. Oh. So, in fact, it was a surprise to me when I moved to Utah that that. That Boy Scouts is actually, you know, what young boys do in the church uh, oh, as yeah, the it's organization. The, it's the activity arm of the pre yeah. ironic priesthood. Because where I came from, that just was not the case. It uh, was just whatever. I so. couldn't swim, so I never became. You couldn't swim? No, I, not until I was 16. And then oh. I didn't realize I could still become an eagle at, at 18. So oh, okay. That one slipped by me. But anyway, yeah. then I, at, at 19, went on a mission. I, I actually lost my dad, and then I lost my mom when I was 16. 
oh, a car so they, accident. They were both gone by the time you were 16? Yeah, dad died of a kidney disease and yeah. mom of uh, a car accident when wow. I was 16. And then wow. I lived with a uh, family and then eventually an aunt and uncle and then went on mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. mission to Denmark when I was 19. And Served a 30 month mission. Back in those days, we didn't have an MTC. Oh, okay. So I had to learn the language on So you, you learn it after you go there? Yeah, they give you wow. an extra six months to learn the language. So. Like a full immersion kind of here we go and. Yeah, it was quite the experience, but. Uh, Do you still speak any, what is it, Danish? Danish. Danish? Yeah, uh, not, not tons, and it's been. You don't get a chance. 50 years, you know, yeah. so <laughs> so it's been a long time. Wait, is that uh, Matt Wilder? Was he in Denmark? Is yeah, that, he was. Matt did Wilder. you guys do a little Danish together when you saw him? Yeah, you? just a douse. <laughs> just douse. Hi. Uh, is that hi? Yeah. Douse is hi? Douse do. It's well, now hi I'm, you. I'm yeah. with you. <laughs> and your missionary experience was a good one? Excellent. The yeah. only problem is that all the Danes were Lutheran, and they were sure, what yeah. we call in Ingen Interessa, no interest. Uh -huh. And so we knocked on a lot of doors. I only gave, got to give the six lessons twice, and, but I did have those two baptisms. And really? Yeah. Wow. Anyway, just so. twice. And all the rest of the times they were just slam doors? Yeah, basically. You gave, you gave a few lessons, but I mean sure. to go through the entire the six was, uh, yeah, wow. just twice. But and how did, it was how a did wonderful experience. I enjoyed it. And we, your testimony grew while you're on your mission? Yeah, I, I would say so. I, I It was... Yeah, it was yeah. strong going in and strong coming out. A yeah. good Mormon testimony. Sure, you know. yeah, yeah. I, re I did realize years later, I was listening to a missionary talk, and he, a return missionary, and he was talking about uh, something, and all of a sudden it just made me think, you know, I didn't really t talk about Jesus on my mission. On your mission, ah. No, I was representing the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I was mm -hmm. preaching Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon and the Plan of Salvation, but sure. Jesus wasn't uh, really part of the discussion. Well, now, I think they've changed that. He, now. he wasn't written into the act, the written discussion, though. Is that what you're saying? Well, indirectly, or? he is because yeah. G Joseph Smith sees God and sure. Jesus, yeah. and we do talk about the atonement. Yeah. Some, I believe, it was in there, but um, it's just yeah, not it's much. not a lot of. Not a lot of Jesus, more church, more Joseph Smith, more Book of Mormon. And you didn't, you didn't recognize that at the time? I mean, you, you <laughs> recognize this past years tense? Years later. Yeah. Years later. Yeah. And just some missionary up there talking about preaching the gospel. And, I'm, yeah. and I th all of a sudden struck me, and this was before I w became Christian, but mm -hmm. as a Mormon, I thought, well, no, I just really didn't talk about Jesus Where much. was Jesus in all of that? Yeah. Yeah. I, interesting. It was interesting. Since I was representing the Church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You'd expect some Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little bit more interesting. than, more than so, I So you come back for your mission. Yeah. And then I marry, met, meet and marry Carla. Uh, now, how did you meet her? We were in a I've young, to know this. Um, young. It was master. What M M and Gleaners, I think, is what they okay. called it. And yeah, we just met. Within a year, we got married in the Salt Lake Temple. Excellent. Uh, back in '69. And that was how many years ago? Forty. 46, 45. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Forty-five. That's great. Yeah. And you settle in Salt Lake area. Yeah, we do. We have four children. Four children. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And and your family life with your with the kids and Carla and it's a pretty normal very LDS very experience. normal Mormon story. We yeah. raised the kids Mormon, and two of our three sons went on missions, and oh, okay. most yeah. of them married in the temple, and right. three out of the four. And yeah, it was just very normal. We didn't do things on Sunday. We tried to avoid going to the store on Sunday and just tried to yeah. live the law the so, best we could. So pretty textbook. You know, LDS Absolutely. experience yeah. and nothing really odd. It, you know, a lot of people who, who leave the church many times talk about the fact that some of the doubts or some of the things that they couldn't square away went up on shelves. D did you have any of those issues in there? Or I was it just kind of clean sailing? Yeah, I didn't really have any. Yeah. Anytime that anything strange came up, and I just remember one lady once told me, she says, I just can't believe in Joseph Smith. And my hmm. first thought was, well, you just don't know. You haven't yeah. prayed about it. You yeah. haven't studied and I thought, how, yeah. how sad for you that you don't have a testimony of Joseph Smith. Right. So really, I didn't have a shelf uh, right. that yeah. I could say. Yeah. I didn't have to deal with that. And I, I don't know if God, if I was just naive or oblivious or what, but uh, <laughs> God didn't. Uh, or just faithful or something, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, willingly blind. Yeah. I mean, I never yeah. did study anything outside the church at yeah. all. Yeah. 
So so let's get to where the switch happens. We get up to we get up to 2005. Yeah. And uh, and I remember I remember in 2005 that was the bicentennial for Joseph Smith's birth. And so th yeah, since that's that was right. the 200 year, yeah. yeah, 1805. So that was when President Hinckley said everyone should read the Book of Mormon. Yep. And I remember everyone was everywhere you went. You saw people even sitting on benches reading the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And you did that that year. I was very faithful, and so by October I'd finished. This was yeah. like in August or September he makes the challenge, and so within a right. month or two I'd read it. And this was maybe the thirtieth time I'd read the Book of Mormon. Oh, so really? I was, okay. I was, you know, I'd done a d in depth study of the Book of Mormon and everything. Yeah. I was very well versed in the Book of Mormon. And, but I'd somewhere, and I think back in Independence, Missouri, or somewhere we'd gone to Kirtland or something, Carthage, somewhere I'd picked up a little 1830 facsimile copy oh, yeah. of the Book uh -huh. of Mormon. Those little beige yeah, things. Yeah. So I start reading that and all of a sudden I realize in First Nephi that there's some changes, some not just punctuation, but some doctrinal changes. Right, right. And that started me thinking. How did, how did you spot those at first? I mean, had you read the Book of Mormon enough that as you were reading it, it just... Well, it just says Jesus is the, is the eternal God. Oh, yeah, that and, would hop out. <laughs> and, 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 and it just popped out. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so it started making me think. And, and I had actually ended up with three main questions. Mm -hmm. One was the uh, changes in the Book of Mormon, doctrinal right. changes in the Book of Mormon. Because right. I believed that the Book of Mormon was translated by the power of God, word for word. Word for word, Joseph yeah. Smith couldn't yeah. move from one word to another until he until had it, it was right. penned exactly right. So yeah. punctuation, uh, printer's problems, I could excuse all that. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this one, that seemed really strange. The other thing yeah. that was odd, uh, because I wanted to find out, well, if there was this change about the nature of God, then maybe I should look at what the first vision has to offer me. And I knew the, the first vision in the Pearl of Great Price was dated 1838. Right, and right. And so I thought, well, what did Joseph Smith write about the first vision before? I didn't know if he had at all or if there was thousands of manuscripts. I, I didn't know. So I go back in and, and find an 1832. It's the earliest mm -hmm. one. Somebody had, I don't know where I found this. But it was in his own handwriting, and he said he only saw one person. That was strange, but hmm. it tied in mm -hmm. back with the change in the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. Made mm -hmm. me start thinking. And then the third thing was the Book of Abraham. Right. Those three right. things. So I ended up eventually bringing in a friend that I was actually his bishop and institute director. I had him come to the house, or he offered to come to the house three weeks in a row and cover these three topics. Right. And I also right. went to a church historian and pose these three problems to him about these changes. So trusted experts you thought could kind of yeah, get you I squared thought, away. Give me some answers here yeah, because I'm, yeah. I'm confused. I'm not overly analytical. Some might disagree with that. Well, <laughs> but, but I, well you were an auditor, so. You yeah, know. I was, and so I. But, but it is encouraging because it means that you weren't quick to jump to conclusions. Well, no, and you I was trying to, to figure unravel. it out, but yeah. it didn't make any sense because right. You can't have Joseph Smith seeing God and Jesus in 1820, yeah, yeah. and then change the and write the Book of Mormon in 1830 that there's only one God. And yeah, yeah. there's actually other places in the Book of Mormon that I've learned since that support the one God concept. It doesn't talk about plurality of gods no. in the Book of Mormon. No, it's actually kind of semi-Protestant, most of the Book of Mormon, doctrinally yeah. speaking. doctrinally speaking, yeah. yeah. It's, and there's very little distinctive Mormon doctrine in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. So. so I went to these yeah. experts, so to speak, people I thought could give me an answer, and I, I guess I've explained it in a way of stretching the truth or stretching the answer. Mm -hmm. it, it just seemed like they were pulling out and trying to cover over the truth, not the truth, but the, the explanation in such a mm -hmm. flimsy weak way. They weren't saying, okay, here's the truth. Right, right. Joseph Smith said right. this, or he wrote this, or no, the, actually that's, <laughs> there were no changes to the Book of Mormon, or the Book of Abraham is okay, or yeah. something. I mean, they just, they had their testimonies, they had their beliefs about the way the these th three things and they were. And they were probably honestly trying to relate to you how they were, <laughs> how they were dealing coping with, with the whole thing. Well, the church historian, way. interestingly, uh, made an interesting comment. He said, I, we're aware of these problems. Right. He, and I said to him, but don't, the members, when they listen to your testimony, they know that you've studied this. They're relying on what you're saying. And he said, I know what I'm supposed to say, and mm. I know what they want to hear. Hmm. Hmm. And 
I don't know, the hypocrisy of that just kind of really got me. Yeah. And yeah. and I it kind of added to my problem rather and, than helped me. And you were you just wanted an honest, truthful yeah. how do you rectify this yeah. kind of thing. And I eventually asked to be released from a couple of callings that I had. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it was interesting, the, one of them was a stake position, and so, so the stake president and his first counselor at different interviews, I met with them and posed these same things. Hmm. And they also had no, no good answer. Answers. In hmm. fact, I eventually was excommunicated because of these, yeah. these, these things, and, and yet, I believe they're true, they're factual, I, I don't yeah. know, uh, anyway. Well, that whole period, I mean, from 2005, like five years or so through 2010, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize it's a, it's a multi-year process for a lot of people, and you yeah. yourself included. I mean, how did you go through those five years? Uh, I mean, were you constantly in turmoil? I got more and Was more miserable. Or, yeah. And your relationship the, with Carla on these things too? I mean, what, just give us a picture question, for those five yeah. years. What good was question. those five years like? I actually, the first two or three were not so, so much. I yeah. mean, it, thought, thinking uh, wasn't a big thing, but eventually the last year or two became more and more. There was Doris Hansen's show, mm -hmm. Polygamy, What mm -hmm. Love Is This, on, and Sean McCraney's Heart of the Matter. Right. Started watching those, and uh, it was interesting because Carla would go to water aerobics on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the nights that those shows were on. And she would. So she's come, out of the house. She's out of the house. Right, right. I never talked to her about any of this. Yeah. And so she's out of the house. And when she'd come through the door after the water orgs, like six to eight or eight thirty, um, then I'd turn the channel so she wouldn't know what I was doing. Ah, uh -huh, okay. The interesting. Every once in a while, she'd say, "Well, I'm going to dinner with my sister. We're going to go grab a bite." And I'd say, "Good, because now I can watch the rest <laughs> of the show." <laughs> Sean's wasn't so bad because okay, it aired honey. the next Tuesday. Right, you right. Know? But I really felt I felt like I was deceiving her. I yeah. wasn't being honest. Yeah. And eventually, around Christmas of 2010, it became I was miserable. Hmm. I'd actually hmm. gone through this thought process. I by now had a list of things from Sean's show, from my own reading. I ran read Grant Palmer's Insider's View of Mormon sure. Origins. Yeah. So I was now aware of, of some of the anomalies and anachronisms and other mm -hmm. things of the Book of Mormon mm -hmm. and some uh, uh, more cre uh, credibility about the Book of Abraham and just yeah. knew now that there were problems. Polygamy, masonry so, in the temple. So were you, were, you, uh, were you talking with anybody about this or no. this is just you? Just me. To yourself. And every once in a while, I'd find something, Doctrine and Covenants 27. All of a sudden, here's all these visions that Joseph Smith has yeah. documented back yeah. in 1829, 1830, 31, whenever it is. I think, mm -hmm. here's an answer. So I run over and I look at the Book of Commandments that was actually first written oh, yeah, before. in 1833. Yeah. It's not there. Oh, and Those things be. have been added Chronology. after, yeah. back in 1835. It just became more and more clear to me, analytically speaking, <laughs> that that Joseph Smith cannot have it this way and yeah. that way and that way. And yeah. so, so finally, Carla kept realizing there was something wrong, and I said, "Well, there is something, but uh, you know, it's big." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I kept thinking she thought I was going to have an affair or had had an affair yeah. or something. Yeah. She thought something else. Like Our imaginations can always yeah. imagine worse than what <laughs> Well, finally in is. February, I finally you share with it, her yeah. a, and I go through the list and she was, she's... Uh, well, how about your children? Did your children notice anything too? Well, they didn't notice, they did notice. They, yeah. they said, what's the matter with dad at Christmas time? Because yeah. I'm just kind of to myself and I'm miserable and... Because if you were that Really, tormented. I'm in torment because yeah. I've lived this life my whole life. Mm. I've been a full tithe payer. Mm -hmm. uh, always had a temple recommend. I was mm. just, you know, in callings, high council, gospel doctrine teacher, bishop, right, right. bishop bricks and everything. So it was just no question that, mm. uh, so, but no, I didn't share with them either. Mm. But what happened with Carla is to share that with her and she was shocked, but she was willing to look. And mm. within about six, eight weeks, she understood where I was coming from and eventually she now is Christian as well. Yeah. So yeah. it was a wonderful, experience. That's a great thing. And yeah. I expected that to happen with my children, with my family, with my friends, and I've been so disappointed because mm -hmm. here I felt I had all this credibility. Now I love Mormons. 
Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. just now don't love Mormonism. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's a, a gospel of Joseph Smith and that it's not yeah, factual. And, and you told me once, uh, your expectation was, is, is once you had got, gotten a lot of this settled in your mind, the, some of the problems, and based on your reputation and your credibility, that it would be a simple, uh, non-prideful thing to just say to everyone, family and friends, well, he here it is. And yeah, then just this pull is what, back and expect people to. Yeah, and just say, oh, well, Earl, you, I certainly trust you. You've, yeah. you know, you've never led, us, led me astray, and I know yeah. who you are. At least give me the respect or the, yeah. the courtesy to look at what I have. And, and so why, and why, so, don't people, why don't people respond? It's a willing, a willing blindness. I think Doris called it that once yeah. upon a time. I just don't think they want to even consider the fact. That, hmm. I don't know whether their belief or faith is so fragile, because in Mormonism we teach that the glory of God hmm. is intelligence. Right. But right. it's all right. based on what we hear in Mormonism as opposed to really knowing the truth. I've yeah. now gone through the Bible and scriptures that I used all the time yeah. Uh, as a Mormon to support my Mormon doctrine, I realize in context that they have nothing to do with Mormonism. <laughs> yeah. They're taken totally out of context and yeah. they're quoted. Uh, it's just Isaiah 2 2 and not 2 1. Right. Somebody should look at well, Yeah, well, let's talk about that new life um, after coming to the Lord. Uh, but I, but I'll, I'll tell the listeners if you want more details about uh, the issues oh, you're yeah. going through and. Uh, uh, more, more of that whole history, the chronology of the act, those five years of agony, yeah. and the issues around it. Uh, online, exmormonfiles.com. There's a, in fact, there's a tab you can click that says Earl's story, and so there's more detail there. And that um, also gives some of the scriptures and some I, of the scriptures the, and, and, and involved, specifics, yeah. just to find out what you're wrestling yeah. with. Thanks. But let me, but let me ask you as we kind of come closer to the end here. What life is different now for you? In, yeah. in what ways, I mean, that I, that I think some of your friends and family who are still Mormon uh, would be surprised at. I mean, what's so different now? Well, Jesus is totally different. Yeah. Uh, he's not my elder brother. He's right. not, uh, he's not going to become a God. He yeah. didn't come yeah. here to progress. He is God. Hmm. And uh, I worship Him and I'm grateful for his, his free gift of grace that I never understood before. But that never, that's never part of Mormon Well, it's grace doctrine. after all we can do. After all you can do, right. So we're, we're working just like the Old Testament Jewish people. We're, we're living the law yeah. and trying to do our part. You know, yeah. we're on our little treadmill, not realizing mm -hmm. that, it, as it says, he that believeth in me hath everlasting life. Right. So Jesus right. has paid for my sins and stands between me and God representing me and making me, I'm clean through his righteousness and through the faith I have in, in Jesus. Well, now, and, different. and some Mormons will say, well, that's just giving up, Earl. That's just that's yeah. saying you can't, you can't hack the, uh, the demands, you know, well, you, you want to give up on. I challenge my 65 years against anybody's 65 <laughs> years in the church. Yeah, I, that's a good contrast. I didn't give yeah. up my, I didn't give up anything and I haven't adopted any sinful practices that uh, I'm closer to God now than ever before. I trust the Bible, which yeah. is u totally unique. Yeah, well, let's talk about the Bible. I love the, the cross. What's, what's different about the Bible now? Because that, for me, in, in, when I talk to folks who make the transition out, it's one of the most exciting things to see because there's, it's just it a, such a transformation. It's tangible. It really well, is. Well, you know, in contrast to the Book of Mormon, which I really never appreciated the fact that there's no archaeology, no DNA or anything else. Right. The Book of Mormon, the Bible actually has context mm -hmm. and history and there's validity. There's manuscripts that support the, yeah. the, the doc, uh, the New Testament, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and even more so, the Dead Sea Scrolls now support the Old Testament. Yeah, exactly. And Joseph yeah. Smith's changes to the to the Old Testament are totally not there. Yeah. <laughs> and so the yeah. Dead Sea Scrolls, that was another tipping point to the Dead Sea yeah. Scrolls. That was important. Yeah. So, yeah, the Bible in context, uh, I'm still learning. There's yeah, a lot of things yeah. I don't know. Christianity is actually tough. Yeah. We're praising Jesus, and he's mm -hmm. he, and that's a rock I can stand on. But you do have to do your own thinking. Yeah. You do have to actually discern well, a little bit. You're not given it. Fed. Because there's no organization above you per se. Yeah. That, there's no, that, you're not given all the answers like you are in Mormonism. Right, you have to do right. a little thinking. Yeah. And, and Mormons yeah. aren't really inclined to do much of that. Yeah, and in most Christian churches, the emphasis anyway is, is here's what I think, but look, here's the word. 
Yeah. And what do you think? How, yeah. how do you read this? What do you see? Yeah. And you, you discern for yourself. You think that would be pandemonium with everyone kind of doing whatever they want to do, yeah. but it's really not. It's it's no. it's quite clear in the and in every church I've ever been in. The emphasis is you need you need to build a relationship with the Lord through your relationship with yeah. the Word, not through a structure of an organization. Well, and so. there's freedom in Christ. We're not, yeah. my yoke is easy, my burden mm. is light, and mm. I feel that. I don't feel like I'm on a treadmill, and yet everything I do is to please God. Yeah. So that's an interesting, subtle little switch. I was yeah. working yeah. before to please God and earn my way. In fact, in Mormonism, I'm trying to put him in my debt. Exactly. He owes yeah. me. He's bound when I do what he said. Yeah. What, I, yeah. what he said. In Mormon, uh, in Christianity, I'm, uh, I love God. I'm, I'm grateful to be part of His family in the body of Christ, and, and I those wanna, things come and as I want to please Him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's radically different. It's a, it's a real sense of peace that's not part of a works-oriented. Yeah. You know, I've got to achieve to gain what I need. Yeah. Well, we're really close to the end. I know. It's I know how it goes so fast when I'm on that side. I of it, know. So. so, if you were gonna, uh, you know, say a word to. LDS listeners right now, what would you say to them? Well, I actually wrote this down, and so I apologize for reading it, but, um, and I, it's kind of sarcastic, but listen to men, follow them blindly, don't read the Bible, don't think, don't mm. investigate, don't study. Mm. That's what I would tell the LDS if they have, and that's being facetious, but sure, um, yeah. if you're unwilling to look, and to study, and I'm I'm just trying to tell them that there is something totally different about Christianity and the Bible and Jesus and grace, and they need to find that out. And, and Joseph Smith and this polygamy and the masonry and the Book of Abraham, all the questions can be answered yeah. if you'll just step back and look at Joseph Smith mm. as maybe something other than what you thought he was. So, as a really practical tip, what's if someone's curious? You're saying, okay, I believe what Earl's saying. <laughs> what, <laughs> Give what, me a call. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? I mean, what's the very simple thing they can do to just start? Wh what's the first step? Well, involve God. Yeah. Start reading John. Read the Bible. Read Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, right. and ask God for help. Yeah. Yeah, and He'll guide you. It may take three or four or five years, but eventually He'll put it on your heart and hopefully lead you along in the different things that you need to to know, to appreciate. It's interesting what brings different people out. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's Isaiah 9, 6. Yeah, you know, exactly. Everlasting Father. Principles. Well, we are, we are out of time. I know. Thanks, Earl. Okay. And we'll see you next week. Yes, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun.